Hey, what are you doing? I'm working on an invention. <clears throat> Why? Because people who invent things make a lot of money. You know, like uh, the TV, the car, the toothpick. I mean, I bet the guy who invented the horse is like really rich. <laughs> yeah. So what are you inventing? Well, uh, up until now, everything I've thought of, someone else has already come up with. Like, uh, the push-up bra. <laughs> That's the problem with ideas. All the good ones are already taken. Except after this. So, what is it? Oh, no. You think Einstein told his sister about the plan for gravity? <laughs> I suppose not. Look, if you don't want to show me what it is, fine. It's a Wembrandt. Is that something Barbara Walters sees in a museum? No, it's a match that lights underwater. Really? Yeah, see? <laughs> you could start fires underwater. I mean, you could catch a fish and cook it without ever coming up for air. <laughs> this is going to change the world as we know it, and I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> it's really amazing. So how does it work? That's the thing I haven't figured out yet. Don't know about the future. That's anybody's guess. Ain't no good reason for getting off your grips. Buy up your pad and pencil. I give you a piece of my mind. In my opinion, nation, the sun is gonna surely shine. Stop all your fussing. Slap on a smile. Come out and walk in the sun for a while. Don't make the feeling You know you want to have a good time And in my opinion, nation The sun is gonna surely shine I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go What for? I gotta work on my act your act looks pretty good to me. I'm auditioning for Arsenio, Nick. Is there anything I can do to help? I got five minutes worth of jokes. I know one great one. There's a guy with a wooden leg and a parrot. It's gotta be clean. Oh. <laughs> Guess what, Dad? Oh. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. <laughs> Blossom. What? Well, remember that media arts contest that Six and I entered? With that video you made of the blue frisbee in the sandbox? It was supposed to look like an oasis in the desert. A symbol of a life-giving forest flourishing in a desolate wasteland. Oh. Anyway, Six and I won the contest. With that piece of art? Yes. And now they're giving us $200 to make another video to compete with other high schools. 30 seconds on a socially relevant theme. Hey, that's great. Congratulations. What's it going to be about? Uh, that's the only problem. I don't have a clue. Did you ever think that the Frisbee may have been invented by a guy who was actually trying to throw away an invention that didn't work? <laughs> <laughs> and he would have gotten away with it, except he had a dog. That's very funny. Use that. You think so? Yes. Bye, bless him. Wish me luck. Think funny. You like her, huh, Dad? It's a little too soon to call. We're at that point in the relationship where you only show each other your good stuff. The next thing that happens is you either find out you're right or their head splits open and that lizard comes out. <laughs> Hi. Hi, guys. Hey, Six. Um, I saw her on one of those cable specials, and she's really funny. Who's funny? Um, Dad's new girlfriend. Oh, you're we standing here? She just made up a joke. Wait, what was it, Dad? It is really funny. Listen to this, Six. <laughs> this guy uh, has a frisbee, and it didn't work, so <laughs> he threw it away. <laughs> and get this. He had a dog, and... Uh, Listen, Blossom, I have this great idea for our video. Cool, what? Okay, so we get George Michael, Michael Jackson, Madonna, and Prince to all stand together, hold hands, and say, Peace is really cool. That is a good idea. Do you think so? 
Yeah, just one thing. How are you going to get all these people? I came up with the idea. Aren't you going to do anything? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. The frisbee was broken, but the dog didn't know that. <laughs> that is the last time we played darts with your one-eyed cousin. <laughs> Next weekend, we get to spend alone doing absolutely nothing. Doing nothing? Did I say doing nothing? I meant wearing nothing. Actually, that might be embarrassing. All right, I'll keep my robe on. It'll be embarrassing because we're going to have a guest. Who? No. What guest? No, who? My niece Tracy is staying with me for the weekend. I hate this. I was thinking maybe Blossom could hang out with her. She's got to do some video thing. How old is this vicious little Nazi niece of yours anyway? She's 16. I haven't seen her since she was 12. Great. How are we going to entertain a 16-year-old girl? Hey, guys. <laughs> Joey, how do you feel about a little double date next Thursday night? With who? Well, me and Rhonda, and you'll be with her niece, Tracy. Yeah, maybe. Now tell me about your niece. She's about your age. Yeah, yeah, what does she look like? She's got a great personality. Uh. <laughs> wait, 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 Joe. Come on. Forget it, Tony. You heard what she said. Yeah, but she is Rhonda's niece. I mean, she's got to have some of her genes, huh? I bet she doesn't fit in them like Rhonda does. <laughs> Do it for me, Joe. I can't, Tony. Look, I have plans next Thursday, okay? I just can't do it. Joey, would you do it for me? What time do we meet? <laughs> you know what we should do? We should choose a subject that really affects our lives. Right. You know, I mean, not something stupid like deficit. Actually, six, the budget deficit will affect our lives. Forget it. It's like five gazillion trillion dollars. I'm not paying it back. What are they going to do? Take my bike? <laughs> You're right. We should do the video on something... sexier. Exactly. What's a sexy subject? Sex. Good. Now, what do we want to say about sex? I hear good things about it. How about sex? When's the right time to start? Morning? Hold it. Wait a minute. I've got it. Sex. Everyone you see here has thought about it. A lot. Most of them are probably thinking about it right now. When it comes to sex, we all have a choice. Safe sex or no sex. Anything else can kill you. Don't be ashamed to carry a condom. It doesn't mean you're going to have sex. But it does mean you'll be prepared if you do. And that can save your life. It's not hard to be prepared. Everyone in this video is wearing a condom. It's a little shocking at first, all that talk about sex. That's what it's about, Dad. I know, and I agree with the message, safe sex or no sex, but I'd really like to emphasize the no sex part, which, incidentally, I think is always a good idea. Right, honey? Anything you want, honey. Or don't want. <laughs> But all in all, I have to say, it's terrific. You think we have a chance of winning the contest? Absolutely. Yes! <laughs> this might be a stupid question, but where did you get all those condoms? Actually, I think that's a very good question. <laughs> it's actually a pretty funny story. <laughs> See, I walked into the drugstore, and um, the pharmacist was about 90 years old, and... 
I told him we needed 12 dozen condoms. <laughs> I thought his eyes were going to, like, fall out of his head. <laughs> so he says he doesn't have 12 dozen. He's only got 11 dozen, and he can get the rest tomorrow. And I say, we can't wait until tomorrow. We need 12 dozen condoms tonight. <laughs> then he asked us why, and so we told him, we're making a movie. <laughs> already? I can't, Tony. I just know this girl's gonna be a beast. <laughs> I remember my first blind date. A friend set us up. We agreed to meet at a place called Dixie's, a jazz club in Lexington, Kentucky, on St. Patrick's Day. I told her I'd be the good-looking musician in the green jacket. Well, naturally, the room was full of green jackets. And then this angel walked in with the biggest set of blue eyes I ever saw. <laughs> she introduced herself to every man in the room. And that was Margaret. No. That was a girl who worked upstairs. <laughs> she introduced herself to every man in the room. And that was Margaret. No. That was a girl who worked upstairs. <laughs> then Margaret came in. Well, we had a couple of drinks. And I figured, oh, what the hell, they can't all be lookers. It's a, it's a nice story. Yeah, well, tonight will actually be my first blind date, and I uh, hope it's my last. You want me to hang around, Joe? In case she's a dog, I can fake a heart attack, and you can drive me to the hospital. That won't be necessary, Buzz. Yeah, thanks anyway, Grandpa. Okay. I'll be in the kitchen in case you need me. Here we go. Hi, guys. This is my niece, Tracy. Tracy, this is Tony. He's mine. Hi. And this Hi. is Joey. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've heard all about him. Tracy, uh... <laughs> You're Rhonda's niece, huh? Yes, my mother is Aunt Rhonda's big sister. So, uh, I guess that would make Rhonda your aunt, huh? <laughs> yes. Oh, wow, so is that how you two guys met? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're family. Yeah, that's how I know Tony. Yeah, and, 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 and I met Rhonda through him, which is also how she met me. <laughs> and I understand that Rhonda met Tony when she was choking on a chicken bone. Right, and that's how Tony met Rhonda, too. <laughs> 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 My God, they're identical. I know. Well, you want to go? Yep. Movie well, we starts at eight. You know, uh, this is so wild. What? Well, um, I was expecting someone with, with a good personality. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Unbelievable. Are they in there? It's either them or we left the shower running. <laughs> Hello? We're back. You missed a great movie. I don't think they care. <laughs> don't you think they make a cute couple? I can't tell. I can't see their faces. Remember when we used to make out like that? When you first start going out, you have to do stuff like that. Have to? Get to. I mean, you get to do stuff like that. Did I say have to? Yes, you did. Well, we better get going, huh? What do you say, guys? Oh, my God. The car's on fire! <laughs> Boy, and I was afraid they wouldn't be compatible. I'm afraid they won't be detachable. <laughs> You're ready to laugh! <laughs> Hurry up, you guys. Andrew's on the Arsenio Hall Show. Make your first appearance with us. Please welcome the very funny Andrea Miller. I hope she does the Frisbee joke. started to date an old guy. 
that you did. <laughs> no, I don't think so, Joe. <laughs> He's a musician. You know what musician means, don't you? That's a Latin word for unemployed. I think it is you, Dad. <laughs> He's a single father with three children. I met him on the freeway. He was standing on the off-ramp with a sign saying, We'll work for new mom. on there, Andrea something. Miller. Oh, she was hysterical. I didn't think so. Oh, come on, all that stuff about that loser she's dating. Oh, it killed me. I swear I know that guy. Yeah, well, see, I don't find that kind of hostile humor funny. Oh, well, what does make you laugh? Oh, observational humor. For example, listen to this. A guy is out walking his golden retriever. <laughs> and he finds a discarded frisbee. <laughs> Don't go away. You'll love this. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, I could. Noon. Well... As a matter of fact, she's here with me. Fine. We'll be there. We'll be where? The vice principal's office. We can't use your video in the contest. What? Why not? Because it's about sex. That's the point, Mr. Pippin. No, 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 that's not the point. The point is that I retire in 73 days, and I am not about to upset anybody about anything on any level, period. But Mr. Pippin, the message that we're sending is about safe sex using condoms. Good message. I don't care. <laughs> this is unbelievable. You call yourself an educator? I do not. It was a toss-up between this job and one of the sewage treatment plant. I made a mistake. You are going to quash an important message that is highly relevant to keeping people alive simply to protect your personal retirement plans? You're a good listener. Well, you, sir, are a self-centered, repressed pinhead. Yeah, well, in 74 days, I'll be a self-centered, repressed tan pinhead. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> Excuse me, I want to apologize for my daughter. Uh, she's upset. She, she shouldn't have called you a pinhead. She should have called you an idiot. <laughs> well, as much as I'm enjoying this uh, verbal... Well, as much as I'm enjoying this uh, verbal abuse, I have a surfing lesson at 3 o'clock, so if you'll excuse me. Who's going to go to the state competition? Joey Feldman. He made this nice little thing about crossing on the green, not in between. It's thrilling, Pete. This is unbelievable. No, this is more than unbelievable. These girls made a relevant and artistic statement on a critically important issue facing every teenager in your school, and instead of honoring them for their efforts, you bring them into your office to break their hearts. This is the most disgusting thing I've ever heard in my entire life. How could you possibly think that a video made by Joey Feldman, a kid who threatens and hurts him to play his rap with Ryan Outlaw, is a better representative of this school in the state competition than the video of Boston and me? This is absurd. It's really a travesty. This is really, really bad, and I'm not going to stand for it. Neither am I. We're going to take this to your superior. She's going to take it to their superior. She's going to take it all the way to the superior. School. By the time we're finished with you, sewage treatment is going to look like a day at the beach. You're going to regret the day you decide to take us on, pal. Because we're not going to stop until everyone in the school, everyone in the state, everyone in this country is wearing a condom on their head with your name on it. I feel like a censored artist. Like James Joyce or Robert Mapplethorpe or Dennis Miller. 
Well, you called a pinhead a pinhead, and that's what counts. I'm proud of you. Thanks, Dad. Just kind of proud of that myself. Yeah, hey, I thought you guys were driving Tracy to the airport. We will in a minute. Joey's saying goodbye to her. Why are you whispering? We want to listen. <laughs> I'll write you every day, Tracy. You have my address in Cincinnati? Yeah, I just don't know what state it's in. <laughs> Joey, <laughs> you're so funny. I know. So what state is it in? <laughs> What's round on both sides and high in the middle? Um... Roseanne Arnold? <laughs> no, silly. Ohio. Oh, I get it. Ohio. <laughs> so, uh, what state do you live in? <laughs> oh, I'm going to miss you, Joey. I'm going to miss you too, Tracy. You know... They say absence makes the heart grow fonder. I know. My dad hates it when I miss school. <laughs> I want you to have something of mine. This pin was given to me by my mother. Every time you look at it, you'll think of me. Uh, wow. <laughs> That's really great, Tracy. Um... I want you to have something on mine, too. <laughs> um. <laughs> Take this $5 bill. It was given to me by my father, and every time you spend it, I want you to think of me. <laughs> Goodbye, Joey. Goodbye, Tracy. Understand, Nick. You made fun of me on national television. What don't you understand? They were jokes. Don't you have a sense of humor? I thought you had a sense of humor. Well, I thought the frisbee thing was hilarious. I try it, it bombed. Well, maybe you didn't tell it right. Nick, I'm a comic. I use material that comes from my life. So if you're dating me, it's sort of an occupational hazard. I can't promise you I'm going to keep our relationship out of my act. Well, it's kind of inhibiting, Andrea. I mean, I'm afraid to do or say anything. Don't be silly, Nick. There's nothing to be afraid of. God, don't you have a sense of humor? <laughs> what are you writing? Nothing. Milk. I need milk. This is making me crazy. Look... I'll tell you what, Nick, why don't we just take a little break and give this whole thing some thought, okay? Okay. But while we're waiting, I'd come over every couple of weeks and have sex with you. You would? You really don't have a sense of humor, do you? really had a lot to say, and now no one's going to see it. You know, like when a tree falls in the forest... Shut up, Blossom. <laughs> it's been a week. Will you let it go already? Oh. Pay hearts. <laughs> Bet that's not how Lenny Bruce's brother reacted. Have you taken any action, or are you just complaining for a living? I've done everything. I sent the video to newspapers, TV stations... We even got turned down by Fox, and they'll put on anything. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, I uh, saw your video again at Freddie Humble's house. How did Freddie get my video? Are you kidding? It's becoming like an underground classic. I mean, there are bootleg copies of it all over the neighborhood. Really? Absolutely. I mean, people are carrying around condoms now who have no prayer of ever using them. <laughs> oh, I just want you to know, I agree with your message 100%. Safe sex or no sex. You do? 
Absolutely. In fact, I've been using one of those methods myself all my life. <laughs> Can't wait to try the other one. <laughs> on the Arsenio Hall show sure. again. I remember the guy. Uh, I wonder who she's room. trashing tonight. Oh, the bum, the, the unemployed musician or something? Yeah. Well, he didn't appreciate my joking about him, so we split up. Was it emotional? Yeah. Oh, stop. <laughs> was it emotional? They care about me. Yes, it was. Whining and crying and sobbing. Finally, I handed him a Kleenex and said, grow up, pal. <laughs> Talk about losers. This guy's been dumped more times than toxic waste. <laughs> Let's see what's on nightlife. <laughs>